Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. Uh, what I do know is that if I've done my editing job correctly, you should be watching me in black and white. And yes, this is 4F Beauty, and you are most welcome. As you will have told from the thumbnail, the title, and if you read any of it, the description, this is a collab with the delightful Debbie from Vinyl Beauty. And we are doing a palette bingo with this. This being the Revolution Forever Flawless Enchanted Palette. So, if you want to see exactly which colours I pulled at random from this palette, how I achieved this look, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, and what I'm blethering on about you, about to you this time? Well then, my lovelies, you have a front row seat. As I've said, uh, for some considerable time, oft here echoed by other less magnitude channels. <laughs> and I'm backed up by Sammy the Slothstraw. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, get comfy, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, my lovelies, welcome back. I am absolutely sure I'm skewiffed again. This always happens whenever I take the camera off of the tripod to try and download stuff onto the camera. Whenever I put it back on, I never feel like I get it back on straight. I'm not straight. Hang on. Hey, welcome back. Okay. Slightly different angle now, but I think I may have... Okay. There's a good chance you may end up in my lap at some point during this. Which could be interesting. Anyway, welcome back from the intro. Uh, it's been a while since I filmed. Let me put a picture up here and show you why. Yes, that person doing a hamster impression. That's uh, that's that's me. Um, basically, I had. Long term viewers will know I've had an abscess on my, I've, I've had a busted tooth or a couple of busted teeth in my mouth for a while now and haven't been able to get a dentist to fix it and then despite me being very careful ended up with an abscess so yeah took me a considerable amount of time to actually manage to get hold of a dentist to get them to prescribe me some antibiotics finally managed that when I've been in agony for let's see it started Friday I finally got the antibiotics on Tuesday so yeah hmm anyway this is a uh, collab with Debbie from Vinyl Beauty. Now I've followed her for a long time, I've just not had the brass balls to actually ask her to collab um, because of that particular YouTuber who shall remain nameless who behaved like a complete and utter bitch when I asked her if she wanted to collab. So, it took me a while to build the courage up. I think it was Payne Hayes and 
confusion and pain insomnia and I just watched one of her films and thought sod it I'm going to give it a go if you're wondering why I've got clips on my top it's because when I bought this top I weighed a lot more and uh, my boobs filled it out a lot more so I will at some point sew those but for the time being so I'm not flashing you clips heads going all over the place can you tell right so I contacted Debbie and I asked if she'd like to do a collab and she said yes she would and the film that I just watched of hers was a haul where she picked up this coincidentally I had also just picked up this this is the Revolution Forever Flawless Enchanted palette one of their tin palettes. I really like the quality of these. Let me show you the inside if you haven't already. I mean, you probably are all aware of what this looks like by now. But nice, grungy, just my kind of colours palette. Now, pulled five numbers. I've swatched them on the back of my hand. As you can see, I got very dark ones. I got Sable, which is this grey up here. Vine, the green, and Inky, the navy blue. That's the first three swatches, the mattes. Then I got two shimmers. I got Shadow, which is this gunmetal grey, and Trance, which is an indigo bluey purple. As you can see. So it's going to be a dark look from me today. But do you know what? It's been so long since I've played with makeup actually quite looking forward to doing that right this does still however remain a teaching channel I'm just going to take this off the back of my hand before I end up doing that and wiping it all down the side of my face <laughs> regular viewers will ascertain to how often I am class this is a teaching channel still uh, partly because of my chronic pain and partly because I want all the beginners to be able to keep up with me I go at a speed that everyone can keep up with hopefully um, I'll show you the type of brushes that I'm going to be using today I'm going to have medium fluffy tapered fluffy and either a lip or concealer or eyeshadow packing brush depending on what your particular brush set calls them um, I will insert a clip in just a moment where I discuss the difference between hooded and deep set eyes the way that eyeshadow wears on them throughout the day is very similar but they are actually two very, very different eye shapes. And the number of people that I see that say, oh, I've got hooded lids, and I look at them and I think, no, actually, you've got deep set eyes. And they'll say, I'm following these tutorials for hooded lids, and it's, it's just not working out properly. And I'm thinking, that's oh, because you need to follow a tutorial for deep set eyes. So I'll talk you through um, both types of eye and the workaround for each. And then at the other end of it, I'll be back to apply some of these pigments. Um, I do zoom in very, very close, so it's just my eyes on screen. I do this for a reason. Um, a lot of people watch on their phones. I watch on my phones. Phones? Phone. And when you get to the right side of 40, <laughs> your eyesight isn't what it was when you were 22. So bearing in mind that there could be some people who've had to remove glasses in order to apply makeup, I zoom in so tight all you see is my eyes. Now this does mean when I'm looking down to change a brush or clean a brush or add more pigment to it or find something, you are going to see my rather wonderful hairline. Uh, for this I do apologise but in terms of the trade-off between being able to see what's going on and occasionally seeing my hair I 
figured you'd rather see what's going on so you can follow the tutorial. Right. Enough blethering. Here's the clip. See you at the other end. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes. So I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So. What are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, this is clean, it's just stained. I'm going to go in with first, I think I'm going to go in with, 
I'm going to go in with Inky, which is the navy blue. Quite a bit of kick up in pan. That doesn't worry me though, I just tap straight back off again. And then I can pick that loose pigment up as I'm building up or, you know, going across to do the other eye. Now, I'm not going to do windshield wiper. I'm going to do the Viennese Waltz of Blending, which is a natural turn towards the nose, a flecker when we get there, and a reverse turn to come back again. The reason I do this, I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 12 stone, that's over 200 pounds. The skin on my eyes moves. I've also got super deep creasing here from where my eye was pulled around when I was five years old. By doing the Viennese Waltz Blend, you are very gently manipulating the skin on your eye, first in one direction and then the other, so that hopefully if it does fold over on itself, you're going to catch it either going forward or going back, so you don't get those telltale white stripes. I always start at the outside edge because it's much easier to blend out too much pigment when your nose isn't in the way. I'm going to start here just above where my natural crease would be and I'm just going to start applying this pigment. Now obviously darker colours are more difficult to create because they have more pigment um, molecules as opposed to the blending um, elements. So, you know, the, the, the powder that's in here to enable it to blend easily, your micas, etc., and your talcs. Um, for lighter colours, obviously you have fewer colour parts as opposed to blending parts and with deeper colours you have more of the actual pigment itself which means it is more difficult or it can be a lot more difficult to blend out. This however is building up really quite nicely it looks a little patchy on camera but in my mirror it's absolutely fine and you'll find that a lot because um, obviously your camera sees things differently to how a human eye does and I'm just really fluffing this out getting it really really buffed out around the edges and really soft. I like that. I like that a lot. This is the shade Inky, by the way. And I'm going to go in and start doing the other eye. The reason I do them like this rather than do one eye completely then go and do the other eye is because your eyes are not symmetrical unless you're Jimmy Chuck and you photoshop them that way when you're finished. Um, and there's times when, for example, if my fibro is particularly bad or if I've had a particularly bad night's sleep, one eye or the other can be slightly puffier. Um, at the moment with this, I mean the abscess has gone down a hell of a lot now, but that whole side of my face was, you know, puffed out. So. There are times you actually have to do slightly different shapes both sides in order to get them to look the same when your eyes are open, which you wouldn't be able to tell necessarily if you then blended other colours on top. So you're sitting here, sit back, check both eyes and you can see the shape is the same. That's good. I'm going to continue to just build the colour up this side. So, Debbie, Vinyl Beauty, I'm pretty sure the majority of you watching me will know her already. 
um, she's a really really lovely lady um, she's very she's very softly spoken I could imagine her being an English teacher teaching sonnets and poetry and you know all the all the elegant bits of an English language. Um, you know, I, I could I could sort of see her sitting at the front of the class in a flowery maxi dress and just reading out poems and you know, enthralling the class with a love of poetry and stuff. And she's just it's just how I vision her. Um, but she does some amazing, amazing looks. I love the fact that she loves playing with colour. She's not scared of colour at all, which is great because a lot of um, a lot of channels you watch, if they'd got a palette like this, they'd be using all the browns and then maybe just do a pop of colour on the lower lash line or a pop of colour on the lid. Um, Whereas, you know, she will dive straight for colour. And so, right, okay, what can we do with this palette then? Which I love. I love the fact that she does that. Um, she reviews a lot of um, products that actually I'm quite interested in as well, which is always useful. Right, I'm just going to clean this brush on a clean washcloth. Um, I don't like using colour switches, they're too harsh on the bristles of your brush especially if you're using a um, natural hair this isn't this is a synthetic but yeah so you know Debbie does hauls she does product reviews she does tutorials um, yeah she's a real she's a real good all-round channel you're gonna be able to find something on her channel to interest you. She's not she's not a copper eye and a nude lip kind of girl, you know? She's like me. She may use the same techniques but the eye looks still look different because of all the different colours that she's using. Which is great. Right. As you can see I've cleaned most of the pigment off of that now. And I'm going to use it, I'm now going to go into, I think I'll go into Sable, which is the grey. And uh, Debbie's actually a UK. <laughs> I know, I know most of the people I collab with are Swedish or American or New Zealand. Um... But yeah, Debbie's actually a UK, which is nice because it means that, you know, when she picks up stuff from a local indie brand, as in from this country, as in not having to pay a fortune in shipping and then import tax and stuff. You think you get clobbered in America with your three and four percent? We get charged 20 percent on everything that comes in. And we get charged it on the cost of the postage as well. Right. If you're going to blend two colours together, which I think is what I'm going to do, I don't think I want to do too much of an editorial look this time. Get the pigment on your brush. And instead of starting above the first colour, start off half on the colour and half on off the colour to blend initially and you will find this will actually give you a much smoother blend than if you start further up and then blend down into it. To be honest I don't really know why, um, it's just, it's something that I've found that works. Um, you know, if I want a more editorial look, then I'll start up here and work down. If 
if I want a more blended look I'll start at the colour I'm blending in with and you can see that blends really really nicely together and just come back along and fluff those edges out if you don't have the same amount of lid space that I do um, where I've started off with a medium shader brush if you were to start with a small one, whatever the width of the head of the brush that's how far it's going to blend out to so you can always use slightly smaller brushes or of course you can take it right up to the brow I mean, because I've got so much lid space I normally leave a gap between my brows but there's no reason that you can't carry that right the way up and still apply um, a bit of shimmer under the tail of the brow see again here this is looking a little bit patchy on camera but not in real life but I do struggle here with very very dry patches uh, you probably saw the creasing on it before I started um, it's weird I've got combo oily skin but I do get very very dry patches just here and here and occasionally just there on my nose it's very bizarre that has blended really nicely together though Gone for a very gothic -y look, haven't I? Well, to be fair, it's quite a gothic -y palette, and the colours I pulled were all very dark. Not that I'm complaining, it's been a while since I've done a dark one like this. It takes me back to the 90s, it really does. <laughs> But yeah, so you know, when, when Debbie says she's doing a a local indie brand, I know that she means it's UK, which means that I'm not going to have to worry about taxes on arrival and, you know, 25 quid's worth of postage. And it really is. I mean, you think you've got it hard in America when you buy from the UK. <laughs> you want to try looking at how much it is to buy stuff from America if you don't live there again I'm just gonna buff these edges out I don't really know how deep I want to take the inner corner I might bring it down a little bit because I can always tidy it up with some micellar water later if I decide I don't want to go quite that deep with it. But at least then it does give me the option if I decide I do want to go very... And bear in mind it is October, so... It is Halloween after all. You watch me come back after I've done my foundation and stuff and I've wiped all of that off. Okay. That blended really nicely as well. Greys can be quite difficult sometimes because when you blend them out, um, rather than staying grey, they can very often go um, either a green or um, like a, a purpley browny kind of shade so it's good that that one actually stayed grey that's good right now I'm going to go in with the which is not my lipstick for a button smaller tapered blender 
and I'm actually going to go into Trance, which was the deeper of the two shimmers. I'm expecting Fallout, but I haven't done my base, so I'm really not worried about that at the moment. I'm going to use this just through my crease. If you've moved your crease, this is the point that you now put this where you've moved your crease to. Because deeper colours go back and lighter colours come forward. And because this is really deep, I just want to... As I said, Fallout City. I just want to get right into the crease there. And just really deepen up just that outer edge. the mobile lid. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing this side. So, how's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. If it hasn't, I sincerely hope that tomorrow is better for you. And if you're at the start of your day and watch me have a breakfast thinking, oh, that's a look I'm not going to copy for work. Hope your day is as fabulous as you are. I'm having a thought. I get them occasionally. little linery type brushes. I'm going to go into Inky. I'm just going to try and sharpen that edge just fractionally. Bring it down to a point. A little bit of trance on that bit there. Still deciding whether I like this, folks. Might all change.
Hmm. Right. Let me just clear some of this fall out away because it is starting to irritate me. And if I don't do it now, editing me is going to be shouting at myself for not doing it. I don't like using tape because if the tape is sticky enough to stop powder getting underneath it, then it's sticky enough it's going to pull your skin around when you peel it off. Right, never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. So I'm going to load this flat brush with some of the pigment called Shadow, the um, shimmer. And then I'm going to wet it with some of this. You can use anything to wet it with. You can use a moisturising spray like MAC or Marie Badescu. Uh, you can use a priming spray, setting spray, finishing spray. Uh, you can even just save an empty spray bottle and fill it with fresh water every time you sit down to do your makeup. The reason that I always spray them is partly to help minimise fallout and partly because it does help with the shine of them. Right, this is now damp, so I'm going to tuck that in there and spin it. Because the last thing you want is moisture getting down here, loosening the glue on your bristles. Because then you're not going to have a brush, you're going to have a stick. Right, and I'm going to apply this to the mobile lid. But so far, didn't have anything on it. That's a really nice colour. Like, really nice. I like that a lot. Dry the brush. do to other eye. Now because the other eye has those super deep creases I do something that I tell you never to do and that is that I stretch my eyelid out but I only stretch it out as far as I need to to straighten the creases because if I don't what happens is rather than it being blended onto the lid like this it packs loosely into those creases and then as it dries it gets it starts cascading down it gets in my eyes it cascades down my cheek it's, it's just it's painful and it looks messy but you can see I only pulled it out as far as I needed to I didn't pull it out to the ear roll as soon as I was done, I very carefully let go. I'm just doing the rest of the lid. Same as I did the other one. Oh, I like that a lot. Right, my lovelies, I am going to pause you while I go and put some foundation on. Place your bits. Will I still have these pointy bits when you come back? Pause it and let me know your guess in the comments box. Right, I've now got a bit of work to do. Uh, 
so I've got a little while before I can talk to you again. But for you, after this wibbly bit that's coming, it's going to be instant. So, uh, see you after the bubbly bit. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. Okay, <clears throat> I am back. As you can see, the points remained. The brows, let's not talk about them today. Right, I'm going to go in with this little stumpy little blender brush. And the only shade that I've not used yet is Vine, which is the green one. And I'm going to use that. Just along under my eyes, just to pull some of the green through, and then just flick it up the edge there. Grungy. Yes, I like that. Suffice to say, this has gone completely not how I'd planned. But as I said, it is October and Halloween is coming and it's a deep palette. And sorry Debbie if you've done something beautifully glamorous. I've I've kind of gone Well, I think I'm embracing my inner girth. I might actually use a little bit of this green just on the front of the brow there. Just to make it a little bit bushier. I've used the old soap brow trick again. I use the, the one from Pink Honey. And I've got a uh, honey glue strawberry sherbet. It's great because it's got a, a hole in the middle. You can just stick your spoolie in. Uh, I recommend using it wet. I recommend using it dry because then it's a little bit sticky so it gives the powder that you're going to run through your brow something to hang on to and the powder then kind of sets the brow in place. I'm just trying to sort of Give a bit more of a, yeah, I like that. As I said, not exactly the kind of thing you're going to wear to the office, but, uh, you know, come see, come saw Rodney and all that. Okay, hopefully this hasn't dried out. I haven't used it for a while. This is my Revolution Renaissance Flick in black. And I am just going to Finish those off with two little upside down crosses. Because seeing how we seem to have gone that way. Hmm. 
Oh yes, I like that. Right, my lovelies. I am going to pause you one last time while I pop some mascara on. Uh, am I going to do highlight or am I going to leave it as is? I don't know yet if I'm going to do highlight. Um, but I will definitely do a lippy. Something with the hair. I'll be back with my finished look. Don't go anywhere. There we go. I am back. I decided against the highlighter. What I did do was put a little bit of this LA Girl Neon Shockwaves in shade Fresh in my waterline. And then used some of the... Uh, Shrine Duo Eyeliner. I use the luminous side to do dots around the edge of the points of the cross and I used the glitter side to go over the cross itself and just do a little bit just under the tear duct on my lower lash line. The lipstick is Luna Beauty in shade Wicked. I love these diamond type things at the top of his. I don't know if you can. Hopefully, you can see that. Right. This is my finished look using the Forever Flawless Enchanted palette. Not looking at anything like I'd originally planned I was going to be looking like at the end of this film. But, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed and check that your post notifications still say all and not personalised because mine got knocked back. Good chance yours would have been as well. Once you've done that, a like, a comment and a share of this film would be awesome and then of course I'm going to need you to go across to the delightful Debbie at Vinyl Beauty and see exactly what look she has gone for. Um, it's probably not going to look like this. <coughs> but yeah, go across to Debbie, say hi, tell her you're from 4F Beauty and do all the good youtuber things over there give her a like give her a follow leave her a lovely comment basically show her the same kind of love that you show me in my comments if however you are new here by either from debbie's channel or tripping over me somehow hi hello welcome uh, don't always look like this. It'd be awesome if you two would like to join the 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube. It's super easy to do. You just hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey, then you ring my bell. Ring my bell. And choose all notifications. YouTube are a bit bad at the moment for sending emails, but hopefully they'll pull their finger out. In the meantime, if you're looking for some me time, see what I did there. As I've said for some considerable time, I've got a lot of different films you can choose from. I've got other collabs, I've got tutorials, I've got product reviews. Uh, challenges, tag films, I even read you my favourite poem. So basically, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist and indulge darlings. What better time to, to have some me time than chilling out, watching someone apply various coloured pigments to their face not always ending up like this.
right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now. Probably should be scowling at you, shouldn't I? Oh no. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs>